Um, one of the things that happened, which I'm sure was common to a lot of people in this room too, is that I got a huge resurgence in hope about the future and what it held. Prior to that, and I'm sure this is common too, I'd had a lot of questions about life, about the meaning of life and the purpose of life. Questions like, why are we here? Uh, is there an overall purpose to the theme of things? And is there a God? What happens when you die? Where did we come from? The usual questions. And it's not that I got answers to those questions, but I got the hope that it would be possible to get answers to those questions. Then, in a period of time after that, there were certain things happened which didn't seem to be consistent with this subject or philosophy. In other words, I expected a tremendous amount of it. I expected a tremendous amount of the people involved with it. If anything, I felt that they would be ideal or perfect beings. Not necessarily analytically, but in some respects I tended to assume that everybody involved with this movement would be very unaberrated, uh, very rational, very friendly, and that things that had occurred during my life up to that point, I didn't expect to see that type of thing repeat in Scientology. Not that I'd thought of it. It was an assumption. And when the first major thing happened, which seemed to be different from the stated aims and goals and purposes of Scientology, I got quite a shock, what we'd call a secondary. <laughs> and I thought, my, my most immediate reaction, I remember very clearly, it was, but how could this be happening in Scientology? And I'm sure that everybody here has experienced that at some time or another. One of the possibilities that could occur after such an incident is that one could start to question the validity of the tech. And I think that's a natural thing to start doing, to question whether it's really so or not, whether one has um, started to aspire to things which may not come about and could end up in a betrayal of, of one's expectations. One solution to that, of course, is to not want or desire anything on the basis that if you don't want something and you don't get it, then you won't be disappointed. I remember the first time I tried that was over a toy, but I still wanted it. It's obviously far more successful that if you want something that you find ways to work out how to obtain them. Anyway, one of the natural possibilities is to, is to not expect or not desire things. In fact, there are Eastern philosophies based on that, where they try to eradicate all desire or wanting for improvement or any desire actually for anything is considered to be one of the roots of evil or one of the pitfalls in life that one should avoid. That is, that's obviously not a satisfactory answer to life. One day, very early on, I remember such a shock had occurred, and it had occurred in the organization that I was in, associated with at the time, where it had come about because a bunch of staff were having a big fight amongst themselves. They were actually fighting over the interpretation of a policy letter, I think about what was the right way to do something, and it turned into a very bitter feud. And I didn't see how that could, could be going on, and I was pretty new at the time, and it was possibly my first experience of that. And I remember going out and walking down the street and thinking, but that's impossible. 
And then as I walked down the street a bit further, I suddenly realized that my havingness was down and that I was feeling somewhat interiorized. And so I started noticing things around like telephone poles and shop front windows and that sort of thing and noticed my havingness come back up. And then I suddenly realized, hey, it was a rehabilitation of the, of the earlier point when I'd realized that the tech does work. There have been many times over the years when the organization that was promoting or promulgating Scientology acted in a manner which for I and for various other people seemed inconsistent with the goals and purposes. And it's come to a point where today I hear in letters and in phone calls and contact with people that some people have gone into a reaction where they've decided that they didn't want anything further to do with it. And I wanted to go into the reasons for that. One of the reasons is, is very obvious. It's because it's too painful. Either, and I'm referring here to mainly emotionally painful, having wanted and expected so much and then been so let down by what went on, the person decided that he didn't want anything more to do with it. It's, it's a solution, but it's a solution of withdrawing or departing from the subject entirely. And that is not optimum either. A, a person that I know pretty well went through such a reaction and I watched it happening and I thought I'd relate it somewhat because the next thing that the person said was that they didn't think that the tech had worked and that they thought that people were being deceived into believing that it worked and that it was all just subjective, meaning that people's cognitions and gains, the idea that they were not real but that the person had only imagined that these things had happened. And this was quite at variance with what I'd known of this person and what this person had experienced earlier. But in listening further and asking some questions, what came to me as the answer to that was that the person had wanted not just the gains the person had got already, but other gains had wanted them so much and then felt so betrayed by some incidents that occurred that his solution to it was, his solution to it like a huge ARC break or a huge reality break was to say, well, I didn't ever think it worked in the first place. And I'm sure that we're all familiar with how people rationalize things. It's an example of rationalization. Um, some people I know who worked in the Sea Org for many, many years five years, 10 years, 15, some 20 years. And then came to a realization that the Sea Org was not carrying out the aims and purposes that they thought it had when they joined. Then they go into a feeling, which is quite natural in a way, but they go into a feeling that, what have I done? I've wasted all those years of my life. Some get into a very hectic frenzy of trying to make up for the lost time. And as a comment on that, philosophically, it's very hard to make up for lost time. <laughs> Tends to park one in the past. I guess the rational reaction to it would be simply to accept what had happened and to go on from there. But experiences even like that are valuable in that one learns things, even if one learns uh, lessons along the way which teach one how not to make the same mistakes again. They're simply a different type of lesson or experience from which one can understand more. <laughs>